I guarantee that anyone who's ever picked up a comic book or bought a ticket to go and see a superhero film has at least once pondered the question, Marvel or DC? Truthfully, this debate has existed within the medium of comics since the 1940s, when national allied publications brought to life the likes of Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman and the Justice Society, whilst their rivals' timely comics responded with their own array of costumed heroes, in the form of Captain America, Namor and the Human Torch. Intensifying with Marvel's resurgence in the 1960s, with the advent of characters like Spider-Man, the X-Men, the Avengers and the Fantastic Four, the question of which universe is stronger has been a hotly contested one for generations. Now, despite the long-standing rivalry between the two titans of the superhero industry, Marvel and DC have collaborated and crossed over on several different occasions. However, while it wasn't uncommon for individual characters to meet in one-off stories, the notion of each company's universe fully clashing with one another seemed like a pipe dream for many years. That is, until 1996, when it was announced that the respective teams teams of superheroes would finally collide in a four-issue series, entitled DC vs Marvel. This comic which pitted many of the most popular superheroes against each other in a series of inter-promotional battles would result in some of the biggest wish-fulfillment moments in all of comics history, as well as amalgamating the two universes and creating something unlike anything ever seen before. So in this video, I want to break down the history of just how this unimaginable crossover came to be. The original idea set out both by Marvel and DC Comics, and how the two long-standing rivals ultimately came together to give comic book fans the battle of a lifetime. Before we continue though, just a quick reminder to leave a like on this video if you enjoy it, and subscribe to Owen Likes Comics so you don't miss out on any future videos. To understand how this ambitious crossover came to be, it's first important to understand the state of both Marvel and DC by the mid-1990s, and the factors that encouraged both companies to propose ideas for an interpromotional event. You see, the early 1990s were a major boom period for the comic book industry, with both companies seeing unprecedented success in terms of sales and interest within the medium, with comics such as X-Men issue 1 for Marvel selling over 8 million copies, whilst big DC stories like The Death of Superman and Batman Nightfall made headline news around the world. Partly fueled by the rise of the speculator market, with investors hoping to find the next Action Comics issue 1, this surge in sales would begin to decline in the middle of the decade, with the comic book market crashing completely in 1996. Now, this pending crash, combined with the rise of new comic book companies such as Image and Valiant, caused both DC and Marvel to desperately search for ways to prevent a decline in sales. As such, Marvel's then president Terry Stewart contacted Paul Levitt, then the publisher for DC Comics, inquiring about the possibility of collaborating in a large-scale event that would benefit both companies' sales. Intrigued by the idea, Levitt instructed DC executive editor Mike Carlin, one of the architects behind the death of Superman, to begin developing ideas for this crossover with Marvel, with Carlin teaming up with his longtime friend, Marvel executive editor Mark Gruenwald, to flesh out the story of what would become DC vs Marvel. Once the pair had decided on telling a four-issue story that would pit each respective universe's heroes against one another, Carlin and Grunewald sought out a team of writers and artists who could bring this exciting story to life, with DC selecting Ron Mars and Dan Jurgens to work on issues one and three, whilst Peter David and Claudio Castanelli would work on issues two and four. When approaching these creative teams about working on the series, both Carlin and Grunewald did so with a immense secrecy, cautious to not let the news leak that the two companies were working together on a story. Ron Mars describes this when recalling how he was initially approached, stating that, When I got a phone call about it from Mike Carlin, I was cautioned not to breathe a word to anybody, obviously including anybody at Marvel or DC. The vast majority of the staff at Marvel and DC didn't even know what was happening, so the initial meeting we had wasn't even on site at either place. It was at Mark Gruenwald's apartment. We initially sat down and sort of came up with the framework of the two universes. We even got into the basics of deciding that, yes, these were separate universes, and we had to have some mechanism for these universes to come together, rather than pretending that everyone was in the same place and just hadn't stumbled into each other previously. 
previously. Meeting in secret at Grunewald's apartment, the two sets of writers and artists got together and began fleshing out both the story and the mechanics for how these two distinct worlds would meet. Peter David would propose the idea of two cosmic beings, representatives of each comic book universe, going up against each other, with each hero featured in the comic being like avatars or chess pieces in these cosmic beings' epic battle. With this decided, the question then shifted to which characters would feature in each issue, and who would win each fight. While some matchups seemed obvious, such as Batman facing off against Captain America and Superman fighting the Incredible Hulk, others were more out of the box, and a result of each writer trying to find unique matchups for their respective heroes. The decision was made to showcase some of the more recent additions to each company's status quo, with the hope that it would enable new readers to easily begin reading each company's respective titles, leading to characters such as Ben Riley's Spider-Man being featured in the story instead of the more traditional Peter Parker. It was also during this time that the structure for the battles and the winners would be decided, with the overall story featuring 11 showdowns between DC and Marvel heroes, five of which would have the results determined by editorial, whilst the other six would be decided by a reader's vote. With both parties now satisfied, the creative team got to work making this ambitious prospect a reality, with DC vs Marvel issue 1 eventually hitting shelves in December of 1995. To fans of each or both companies, this truly seemed like a dream come true, getting the opportunity to see their favourite heroes from each company finally come face to face in battles they previously could only have imagined in their minds. The first issue of this four-part story opens with a shot of Spider-Man heroically swinging through the streets of Manhattan. As he does, he suddenly sees a beam of light emerge from an alleyway, heading towards it only to be sucked through a portal, emerging on the other side to find the Joker there waiting for him. As Spider-Man comes to his senses, we see similar occurrences happening across both the Marvel and DC universes, with the Juggernaut being teleported to Metropolis, where he encounters Super. Superman and Robin being teleported inside of the Xavier Institute. As both sets of heroes attempt to make sense of these strange new happenings, we watch as Clark Kent arrives to work at the Daily Planet, where instead of being met by Perry White, he's met by J. Jonah Jameson, as well as Ben Riley, his new photographer. It's here that Ben gives Clark a series of photos, displaying the various battles that have been taking place between Marvel and DC characters, with the two heroes deducing that a higher power must be be responsible for this. The final pages of issue 1 confirms this, as we see two cosmic beings, one red and one blue, reaching out to one another, seemingly bridging the gap between the two respective universes. From here, the comic would introduce the character of Axel Asher, an everyday citizen who begins to see visions of the two cosmic brothers, as he's being stopped by the police. While he is though, we see Killer Croc emerge from the sewer, being confronted by Wolverine, as both New York and Gotham police appear to apprehend him. As Clark and Ben arrive to report on the fight, Axel manages to escape, before stumbling into the same beam of light that engulfed the likes of Spider-Man in the previous issue. As Axel stands before this mysterious beam, he and many of the other heroes are engulfed by it, seeing visions of the two cosmic brothers who explain that they have each selected champions to represent their respective universes, and that only one of them can survive. With this realisation, we see Marvel and DC's heroes begin to battle one another, with Thor and Shazam being the first formal encounter, with the God of Thunder emerging victorious, though losing his hammer in the process, which is later found by Wonder Woman. After this, the next fight is between Aquaman and Namor, taking place deep underwater between the two respective kings of Atlantis. Aquaman manages to overcome Namor eventually, and their battle is intercut with scenes of the Flash taking on Quicksilver. The Scarlet Speedster does actually defeat Quicksilver, giving DC a 2-1 advantage in the first three fights. Following this, the next battle is actually between Jubilee and Robin, which is complicated by the revelation that the pair have actually fallen in love after the Boy Wonder teleported into the Xavier Institute. Nevertheless, they do eventually fight, and Robin is able to subdue Jubilee and claim victory. After this, the comic focuses on Green Lantern taking on the Silver Surfer, 
Surfer in space, with Kyle Rayner ultimately being no match for the mighty power of Galactus's Herald. After this, we then see Elektra defeat Catwoman, with Marvel clawing the score back to 3-3. It's here that Marvel begins to take the advantage, with Wolverine defeating Lobo, Storm defeating Wonder Woman, and Spider-Man defeating Superboy, before we see arguably the two most epic clashes in this entire comic, as Superman faces off against the Hulk, whilst Batman goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Captain America. In these two hard-fought battles, Superman manages to incapacitate the Incredible Hulk, while Batman is able to outsmart Captain America and claim victory. As these battles are going on though, we also reconvene with Axel, who has discovered that he is supposedly a shard from each of the two universes, transforming into the superhero Axis and taking on the role of being a gateway between Marvel and DC. As we see him transform into Axis, the revelation hits that despite Superman and Batman winning the final two encounters, Marvel have overall won the battle 6-5, to five, thereby placing the entire future of the DC Universe in jeopardy. However, issue 3 would conclude with an epic twist, as the two universes suddenly begin to merge, and a flash of light engulfs both sets of heroes, and leaving the fate of them and their respective universes seemingly uncertain. With the shocking cliffhanger ending of issue 3, both Marvel and DC Comics would take the saga in a bold new direction, holding off on the release of the final issue and instead fleshing out the unexpected reveal from the end of issue 3. As readers saw a sight they never could have possibly imagined, the two companies' greatest heroes had merged and amalgamated into brand new characters. Truthfully, plans had been in place for what would become known as the Amalgam Universe from the very beginning of the DC vs Marvel story. Line, with both companies believing that such a stunt would not only generate even more interest in the climactic issue, but overall provide a much needed shot in the arm for both of their general sales. As such, before issue 4 hit shelves, the two companies under the co-owned banner of Amalgam Comics would release 12 one-shot issues one week after the release of issue 3. These comics would feature strange and unique blends of some of the world's most popular superheroes, with amongst the most well-remembered of these amalgamations, being the likes of Dark Claw, a mix of Batman and Wolverine, Super Soldier, a blend of Superman and Captain America, and Spider Boy, a combination of Spider Man and Superboy. While this was all clearly a premeditated stunt by the two companies, the Amalgam comics were still a genuine spectacle to behold, as nothing like this had ever happened in the comic book industry before. Even the sheer notion of DC and Marvel combining their biggest characters together once seemed truly impossible to consider, and yet for a brief period in 1996, it became the reality that both of these two companies existed in. As Marvel's assistant editor Tom Brevoort would explain, I know that the idea of Amalgam was really meant to be the big surprise part of the way through because nobody would expect it was coming. It was kind of the fun, unexpected twist in the third act that would plus up the experience beyond just being the Marvel guys and the DC guys all having a story together. These 12 single issues would serve the role of building anticipation for the fourth and final issue of DC vs Marvel, which was finally released in May of 1996. Issue 4 opens with Dark Claw and Super Soldier chasing down the Hyena, a mix of the villain Sabretooth and the Joker. As we learn that in a last ditch attempt to save both universes from annihilation, the Spectre teamed up with the Living Tribunal and worked together to create the Amalgam Universe. As Super Soldier and Dark Claw corner the Hyena, the pair are confronted by Axis, who reveals the shards of both original universes still exist within these two heroes, with Axel using his newfound powers to split the amalgamated characters and restore the heroes to their original forms. Now back in their classic states, the two sets of heroes unite and try to put an end to this conflict, working together to maintain order as Access, the Spectre and the Living Tribunal confront the Cosmic Brothers, refusing to be pawns in their interdimensional battle. As we see the Justice League team up with the Avengers to fight both Thanos and Darkseid, the Cosmic Beings begin to fight one another directly and in doing so, put all of space and time in danger. Realising this, Batman and Captain America arrive to try and stop them. These two mortal men willingly face off against gods, and it's their combined courage and heroism that eventually inspires the two cosmic beings to stop fighting, and for the very first time, they
they speak, congratulating each other and choosing to set aside their differences. With this, the duo restore both the Marvel and DC universes to their previous states and allow both sets of heroes to finally return home. From here, as we see normality begin to resume and the likes of Superman, Spider-Man and Batman return to their ordinary surroundings, Access becomes burdened by the memory of what transpired, as well as feeling alien in either of the two universes. Instead, he chooses to use his power to journey further into space and time, disappearing into the unknown as the war finally comes to an end. Coming back to this infamous story some 15 years after its release, I can honestly say that Marvel vs DC is truly a spectacle to behold. While in terms of narrative and storytelling, it would be hard for me to argue that this was any sort of achievement, what it lacks in nuance, it honestly makes up for in sheer awe and astonishment. The premise for this series is unbelievably simple, with the mechanisms of the two cosmic beings merely being there to facilitate the series of 1v1 battles that the comic promises. And although at its core, it often boils down to little more than a series of fan service infused fights, I genuinely think there's something to the innate form and excitement that comes with the sight of seeing these iconic superheroes do battle that makes this to me a surprisingly memorable and endearing story. Especially when you consider the fact that it was created at a time when the entire comic book industry was beginning to struggle and both Marvel and DC Comics were desperate to boost their sales, the fact that these two longtime rivals came together to give fans something truly groundbreaking is quite impressive, as was the response to the four issue story. You see, DC vs Marvel became a massive hit for the two companies, with the final issue even becoming the best-selling comic book of 1996. While it obviously wasn't enough to single-handedly save either company from the slump that the entire comic book market was experiencing, it did represent a brief respite from the downward trajectory, all whilst entertaining fans and giving them not only the battles they'd previously dreamed in their heads, but an unpredictable and memorable twist in the form of the Amalgam Universe. The Amalgam series would prove so popular that Marvel and DC would actually unite yet again the following year, producing 12 more one-shot comics featuring both returning favourites like Dark Claw and Super Soldier, as well as new characters and teams like Iron Lantern, Challengers of the Fantastic and Lobo the Duck. Overall though, I think that while the story of DC vs Marvel isn't anything tremendously groundbreaking, it's fair to say that it didn't really have to be. The sheer fact that the likes of Batman, Superman and Wonder Woman would go head to head with Spider-Man, Wolverine and Captain America was enough to make this an event that would remain in the hearts and minds of comic fans for years to come. More so than anything else, whilst reading each of the four issues, I found myself just simply appreciating the fact that a story like this even exists. When you consider the storied rivalry that Marvel and DC have had for many decades, as well as the fact that it's rare to see direct competitors work together this closely, it makes this story such a significant piece of comics history, and a massive achievement on the likes of Mike Carlin and Mark Gruenwald for bridging the gaps between their respective universes and pulling off the near impossible. And while it may not go down as one of the greatest comic books ever made from a narrative perspective, I can't say it didn't spawn many memorable moments and characters. And as far as large scale events go between multiple different franchises, there's honestly few that match the spectacle of Marvel vs DC. And that's why, in my opinion, this series might just remain the ultimate comic book crossover. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to leave a like on the video and leave a comment down below as well. Let me know your thoughts on everything we talked about in today's video. I can't wait to hear what you have to say as always. If you're new to Owen Likes Comics, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notify bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And if you enjoyed this video and you want some more, there should be some others on screen right now that you might also enjoy. If you want to support the channel and help me make more videos, you can do so over at patreon.com slash owenlikescomics. And if you want some more of me, you can follow me on Twitter, just at owenlikescomics. That's all for this video though. Again, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I'll see you next time.
But until then, take care and keep reading.